brother! Ben, when they announced they were making a new Harry Potter play that continued the story, I was ecstatic. Beth and I were at Barnes & Noble that day. We even pulled the old switcheroo and went to Kroger next door at the last second to avoid waiting in lines. Pro tip for whenever the next Harry Potter or big book whatever comes out. Grocery stores sell books too. Go there and you won't have to wait. What is the next big Harry Potter thing? I mean, like not Harry Potter, the next big book. I feel like people really want that to start happening again. They tried it with the Hunger Games and like Divergent and Twilight and like Maze Runner. Yeah, but no, nothing, nothing's there. I'm so excited. It's gonna happen. Something's gonna be it. So yeah, I was thrilled when this came out, but uh, I mean, I'm sure it's very entertaining and I do really want to see it in person, but um, I'm, I'm sorry, this, this is just not canon. <laughs> What is Harry Potter canon? Like, what actually counts towards the real story? It's certainly not uncommon for fictional universes to start expanding outside of their original medium. Star Wars, for example, of course has its eight main movies, but then it also has two TV shows, tons of novels, comic books, even video games, all of which count as real canon towards the main story. Harry Potter is a little different though, because it started as books and has had to continuously evolve through the the digital age, and mostly I think it's done a great job. Obviously there are the seven main books, but what else? Some people are straight book purists. It's just the main seven, that's it, that's their entire wizarding world, which is fine I guess. It sounds to me like you're willfully missing out on lots of things that are obviously canon, some of which are also actually books. For example, there are the books inside the books, like Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them, Quidditch Through the Ages, The Tales of Beetle the Bard, short stories from Hogwarts of power, politics, and pesky poltergeists, and Hogwarts presents an incomplete and unreliable guide. But what about the movies? Do they count? Well, yes and no. Stick with me, it is a little bit tricky. The eight movies based on the seven main books do not count as canon. They are based on canon things, but not canon themselves. The Fantastic Beast movies, on the other hand, are not based on anything. I do count them as canon. They are the real life adventures of the person who wrote this canon book. Although admittedly these lines are getting a little blurry since they use some of the same sets from the Harry Potter movies and the new Fantastic Beast trailer, but I'm sticking to my guns here. Fantastic Beast counts as canon, Harry Potter movies don't. And then of course there's Pottermore, which is full of a little of both. There's tons of writing from J.K. Rowling herself, which provides backstory to the characters and places that we love so much. That absolutely counts as canon. But it's also the main Harry Potter news site, so it's full of new articles and updates about quizzes and museum exhibits and mobile games. Which is all a lot of fun, but of course isn't really canon. And then there's the mess that is the Cursed Child. Now don't get me wrong, there is a long list of things I like about this book. Like, one of Harry's kids is in Slytherin. But there are just so many things that seem to go against the rest of the series that make me question its canonicity. And here's the thing, I think most people would just be happy to accept that it's just a fun Harry Potter play that doesn't officially count, it's just a fun thing to go see, except there's this one tweet from JK Rowling that just ruins everything. She tweets, the story of the cursed child should be considered canon, though Jack Thorne, John Tiffany, the director, and I developed it together. Yes, I know, that does sound pretty cut and dry, just end of story, right? And yet, it just isn't. The cursed child just has so many plot holes and just contradicts so many other things JK Rowling herself has also said in other places. Uh, it's hard to even just know where to begin. There are so many things that seem just out of place with the characters we've come to know and love. Get ready for spoilers, by the way, if you happen to have not read this yet. Like Cedric ever becoming a Death Eater under any circumstances. No, 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 no. You can't, you can't, you can't just alter everything that was great and noble about Cedric. You can't just, if, you know, because if Cedric even had the capability of becoming a Death Eater, it takes away so much meaning from his actual death in the Goblet of Fire. Ron and Hermione don't get together if Hermione doesn't go to the Yule Ball with Victor. Yeah, 
You sticking with that? You st that's your, st you stick, you're sure? You're sticking with that, okay. Yeah, Ron and Hermione definitely never would have realized they liked each other if it hadn't been for that one moment of jealousy. That, that That's the one thing, that's it. Sure, yeah, whatever. Voldemort day, v Voldemort day. Are you telling the guy, the Death Eaters won't even say, his, they're afraid to say his name. He puts a taboo on his, he, you, you think Voldemort celebrates holidays? Hermione becoming Minister of Magic? Ups no, I mean, even Bottermore currently lists Shacklebolt as the present Minister of Magic, and we are pretty close to present day in Cursed Child, so uh, I'm gonna need to see some updates. Oh my God, the list goes on. The Flu Network is available at Hogwarts. Harry and Draco are friends. The Trolley Witch has grenades. Well, I'm gonna repeat that one for maximum emphasis. The Trolley Witch has grenades? Voldemort has a kid? Oh, I agree, it's completely ridiculous, but I guess that it's, they are all plausible, I suppose. There's nothing absolutely contradictory. So let's focus in on the big issue here, the time turner. Here's the issue with the time turners, is that going back in time and creating alternate timelines with the time turner is breaking the established rules of how time travel works in the wizarding world. I know we give time turners a lot of crap on this channel, but it's precisely because they don't work the way they do work in The Cursed Child that they are okay in The Prisoner of Azkaban. Like when you read Prisoner of Azkaban, it's easy to be like, oh man, you could just always go back in time and fix something using a time turner, but not really. Because it's established in that book that when you go back and use the time turner, things already happened that way. That's the way things always already were. Harry and Hermione don't go back and create a new timeline where Sirius and Buckbeak escape. They were always there the first time everything happened. Now, true, the time turner in The Cursed Child does work a little bit differently. You can travel way further into the past and you can only exist there for five minutes before being sucked back into the future. So I can see where the argument is. It doesn't work exactly the same. You don't age back into exactly when the time turner started like you did in Prisoner of Azkaban, so maybe you would create an alternate timeline. But no, that argument just doesn't hold up. It's still breaking the universe's own rules. For example, in The Cursed Child, one such use of the time turner involves Albus Potter and Scorpius Malfoy going back to the second task of the Triwizard Tournament to inflate Cedric's Diggory head so he loses the second task. This causes him to become so humiliated that he becomes a Death Eater. Again, I have so many issues with that in and of itself, but that's not the problem I'm addressing right now. The problem is that the way time turners are established in Prisoner of Azkaban, that whatever happened always happened. And I don't know about you, but I read Goblet of Fire and Cedric's head doesn't get all inflated. If you're saying they went back in time and did that, then they always were there. Then when you're reading the Goblet of Fire, Scorpius and Albus are there in the lake the whole time. They are not new to the scene. They were always there. That's not to say time turners don't do anything. It's not like you can't go back and make a difference. It's just that by the time you personally in the present decide to turn the hourglass and go back, future you has already decided to do that and has already started making changes, which you should have already experienced. And then there's the matter of Severus Snape. Snape should be dead. All right, allow me to bring you up to speed. After the two go back and blow up Cedric's head in the second task, only Scorpius is able to come back to the present because apparently whatever they just did now caused Albus not to be born. Scorpius comes back to the present and now at Hogwarts learns from a still alive Severus Snape that Cedric, after losing the second task, became a Death Eater and then killed Neville Longbottom. And Scorpius puts together that, oh, if Neville was dead, he couldn't have killed Nagini at the Battle of Hogwarts so when Harry and Voldemort had their final showdown, Harry loses because Voldemort can't die. Oh. So, okay, but okay, so in this timeline, Harry and Voldemort still have their final showdown, but Harry dies, right? That's what happens? Wrong. Here's the thing, if that's the only difference that Neville dies and can't kill Nagini, then guess what? Harry's wand still shot the golden flames at Voldemort, which still causes him to seek the Elder Wand, and he would still eventually realize that Snape is the one who he thinks is the master, and he would still kill Snape. Also, 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 Nagini being alive shouldn't mean that Harry dies, it should just mean that Voldemort doesn't 
die. Harry should still be the master of the Elder Wand in that situation, so the wand should still backfire. The only real difference would be that Voldemort would survive, kind of like he did when he tried to kill baby Harry, because of course Nagini would still be alive. But guess what? Even if that's not the case, even if Harry isn't the master of the Elder Wand, he still shouldn't die. Dumbledore explains to Harry when Voldemort tries to kill him in the forest that the reason he lives is because Voldemort used his blood in the potion that brought him back to life. And as a result, the protection from Lily's sacrifice lives on in Voldemort's blood. And guess what? That has not changed since the hour that has passed when Voldemort last tried to kill Harry in the forest. Elder Wand or not, Voldemort cannot kill Harry. But he still would have killed Snape. Uh, do you see why it doesn't work, how it just ignores its own rules, how it just cannot count? Uh, but but J J.K. Rowling said- I know what she said, but she also said other things that contradict things that happen in this book. For example, in The Cursed Child, apparently Albus and Scorpius hate Quidditch, and yet there's an article on Pottermore recapping the 2014 Quidditch World Cup where Ginny tells Rita that her son Albus is a huge fan of Brazilian chaser Gonzalo Flores, but I mean, Let's face it, who isn't? Rowling also says in an interview in 2007 that Harry doesn't give the Marauder's Map to anyone, but his son James sneaks it out of his office one year. And yet, in The Cursed Child, we see that Harry actually gives the map to McGonagall to track his child at school, which is just great parenting, if you ask me. Did I mention at one point in this play, Harry Potter, canon Harry Potter, apparently, tells his son he wishes he wasn't his son? That's a thing that happens in here. That's what canon Harry apparently says. No. I'm afraid. No, not the Harry we know. Admittedly, some of that is just stuff she said in interviews and probably shouldn't be considered too official, especially compared to something she actually wrote. For example, in one interview, she says that Harry and Ron go on to revolutionize the Aura Department at the Ministry, but then later releases an article on Pottermore where, after two years at the Ministry, Ron leaves to go run Wizard Wizarding Wheezes with George. But to that end, maybe tweets shouldn't be taken so seriously either. And then there's Pottermore. If you are an avid reader of the site, like, I am, you will know that in the past couple years there has been a flood of information about North American wizarding culture. This is because it's all providing background for the Fantastic Beasts movies. Rowling is consistently adding a background and canon information to that end of the wizarding world, and yet there is nothing, not even character profiles for anyone in The Cursed Child. I love the character profile. Sometimes they're just like highlights of different characters' moments, and sometimes they'll even include little bits of writing from J.K. Rowling herself, which are always super interesting. There's no nothing for Scorpius Malfoy. Nothing for Delphi. Newt, you bet. Tina, absolutely. Gabrielle Delacour, the minorest of characters, whole character profile. But nothing for The Cursed Child, because even Pottermore knows this is nothing more than a fun, non-canon story. Ben, my question for you and everyone else is, what do you think? Is The Cursed Child canon? Should it be considered part of the official story? Let me know your thoughts in the towel section down below. These socks are amazing! Guys, thanks as always for watching. Please remember to like this video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I'm excited to announce that the first round of Super Carlin Brothers pins has officially been manufactured. If you want to get your hands on one of these, they are available exclusively via our Patreon. We'll be releasing four every year. This is the only way to get them. You need to sign up by the end of March if you want to get in on this one. But Ben, that's it for me. If you want some more Cursed Child action, like uh, who is the Cursed Child? Because the book doesn't make it obvious. You can check out this video right here. Or if you want to check out our Patreon and sign up for the pins, you can check out this link right here. That's all I've got for you today, though. I will see you in another life, brother.